New York Times best-selling author Lisa C. discusses how her daily tea-drinking rituals connect her with the broader story of tea. My name is Jessica Natale Woolard. I'm a tea writer based in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Join me for a conversation with Lisa as we discuss the role of tea in history, culture, art, and daily life. When you contemplate tea, its history, production, commerce, and cultural practices old and new, you see how influential it's been throughout history. So Lisa, how do you think tea influences our view of the world? Well, you know, I think it depends on where you are in the world, right? I mean, tea is the second most popular drink in the world after water. And in some countries, you know, it is really important. China, obviously, India, Turkey, um, you know, different places around the world. However, in a place like the United States, it's obviously a distant <laughs> it comes in way after, you know, water, then coffee, then maybe, I don't know, Coca-Cola <laughs> or something. Um, so I think it really depends on where you live and how important it is within your, your own culture. I mean, you know, here in the United States, we don't really have that tradition of afternoon tea time if you're, if you're like more of an English tea drinker. Um, or just even the idea of having a glass jar with tea that you carry with you throughout the day. So um, it really just again depends on where you are. But I think for those places and those cultures where tea is really central to life, that you're right, just even with your question, that it touches on all aspects of your life. It's it's about taste, it's about aroma, it's about how you feel on that particular day. It's about the connections some of us, not all of us, will make to poetry and art um, and to nature. So I, you know, I just know for myself, I, I drink tea every day. And in the, you know, sometimes the night before, sometimes that that morning, I'll start thinking about what kind of tea do I want to drink today? You know, what, what, is, what's, what am I going to start with? And that it really becomes something that is really connected to my own emotions and to just, you know, where I am in life at that moment. Do I want something really kind of light and fresh? Do I want something uh, that's really rich and deep in flavor? Do I want a tea, that, you know, like an old pu'er that is really, that will take me into history, you know, just by tasting it. So you've touched on how different cultures have different traditions around tea and different practices. What do you think about tea's ability to connect different cultures? So what role does tea play in blurring some of those boundaries. I, I'm often reminded of this line from Lin Yutang, who wrote, there is something in the nature of tea that leads us into a world of quiet contemplation of life. And I think that that's true, that, it, that if you're experiencing tea or tea traditions from other countries or other cultures, it does kind of force you to slow down and think about that culture, where that tea came from, the physical labor involved. I mean, I having now, you know, spent time in the tea mountains, I I will never ever take a cup of tea for granted again. You know, I will always, when I'm pulling out the leaves and looking at the leaves, I will think about all the people who touched those leaves before they came to me. And there's something to me very powerful about that. You know, that you have the pickers, you have the people who process, you know, every leaf picked by hand, the people who process it, the, the women who sit with those big trays and, you know, they're, they're sorting it leaf by leaf by leaf. To me, again, it just, it really forces me to slow down and think about what went into this cup that I'm enjoying. So it sounds like, tea is part of your daily tradition 
what is it about tea that fascinates you and that, that you have chosen to make tea part of your daily life? I really, I, I hate to keep going back to the personal, but maybe that's the right place to be in the sense that, and I, again, already mentioned this about slowing down, but I think part of that slowing down is really about looking inward. To really, you know, earlier I said, um, you know, when I wake up in the morning or even the night before, I'll think about what tea do I want to drink today, you know, and, and uh, you know, I don't drink just the same tea all day. Sometimes I'll switch to three different ones, depending on the time of day and depending on how I feel. But that also means I have to think about what do I want? You know, how do I feel? What do I need? I think maybe that's it. What do I need? today? What do I need this morning? What do I need this afternoon? What do I need tonight before I go to bed? You know, it's, it's such a sort of new agey phrase, but it's really about mindfulness, right? Mm -hmm. That you're actually having to think about who you are and where you are in that moment before you even make that choice of what you want to drink.